What's the most unethical thing you've done I roll? I'm sitting in back of class, beside a bully, for no reason, he starts punching my shoulder, starting off not very painfully, but slowly getting stronger, he's looking at the teacher, not at me, so that he can quickly stop if teacher turns around, myself being a champion of physics, not physique, I decide the best course of action is to just put my pen between us, pointy end facing him, while I myself face the teacher too, a few seconds later, he yelps loudly, the teacher turns around to tell him off for disrupting class, instead sees him spaz out and punch me in the head, that wasn't really part of my plan, but hey, I'd say worth it, he was already suspended a couple of times for bullying other kids, and this was basically last straw for the school, this time, he got expelled, I died at the that wasn't really part of my plan part, great story. Today when I bought zip ties and AA batteries, the cashier chick didn't scan the batteries. I noticed but I looked at her, the screen, and back at her. She looked back smiling and I just walked off. I did the same thing. I even gestured at the screen and batteries with my pistol, but she still didn't ring them up. No smile though, I think she was having a bad day. Many times when I was a kid and the original Bionicles, Lego, were still being sold. I would bring a pen and paper to the store, and write down all the codes, shown on the outside of the boxes, for all the bionicles on the shelf. I then take the paper home, and redeem all the codes for my account on the bionicle website, giving me free points and effectively rendering the codes for the whole store's inventory of bionicles useless to anyone else wanting to buy one. I was at a bowling alley with some friends when I was around 10 and while dicking around I found out that a ski ball machine's coin holder was unlocked. I played a couple free games and then when no one was looking I just put the 2 3 dollars worth of quarters in my pocket. I feel kinda bad for it because it is illegal but the cops haven't knocked down my door yet so I think I'm in the clear. FBI open up. Paintballing. I was 25 and went paintballing with my friend who was 23. It was his first time and my fifth or sixth. It was during the middle of a weekday and for some reason there were a fair amount of 8 12 year old kids plus their parents. We get checked in and it's me, my friend, and 10 kids versus 8 kids and 4 parents. We're in a warehouse and I take charge setting up positions for the team. There was a main door connecting our side and a small staircase leading to the second floor which overlooks the enemy's side of the warehouse. Knowing that they'd try to flank us upstairs, when the ref blew the whistle starting the match I told all the kids to rush the main door. What I didn't tell them was that me and my friend would go up the stairs while they attacked. I sound the charge and it was horrible. It was like a child version of Saving Private Ryan. I don't know how they got to the main door first. But the first kid on my team to get up from behind cover took several paintballs to the face. The rest rush in and were quickly mowed down. However, I guess it was a good distraction since me and my friend got upstairs without being noticed. One kid on our side was still alive in the corner taking heavy fire. The enemy team concentrated on him allowing us to get the drop on the enemy team. Me and my friend had a good time. The kids? Not so much. Not the men. Or the women but only the children this time. I sold cars for 2 months, if that wasn't unethical enough, in and of itself, since plenty of fish uses car ownership as a possible search criteria, I used the app to try to contact women in need of a motor vehicle so I could sell them a car. I put the hottest hot sauce I could find in my lunch that I brought to work to find out who had been stealing my food. I really didn't care about the food. I wanted my vintage Tupperware back. That crap still had a few thousand more uses in it. The food thief got fired and I only got one of my containers back. The sucker had been throwing them away after eating my lunch. My co-workers and I would regularly steal from the frozen yogurt store we worked at. We were all college students, even the managers, and the owner was a huge dong. He would keep the tips that people left us and never gave them back in our paychecks so we stopped reporting most of tips. It was a self-serving store and someone figured out how to clear the order after weighing so that it looked like a legit person. We would give away free yogurt to our friends and take for ourselves. We also had a rewards program in that store that would give you cash for every certain amount of money spent. Most of the time customers wouldn't ask to input the points so I would input my own number. 
When I was 19 and in the McDonald's drive through my friend and I ordered a water. It was pretty busy. Get to the front and the guy starts handing me someone else's order. Big Mac. Two McChickens. Fries and a couple drinks. So I played along and got a free meal. I was a young poor college student and high as a kite. But it was still really crappy. A few years ago. I played Rune Escape. And I wanted a really cool skin. Well. You could take surveys and such to earn a secondary currency and buy the skin with that. So. I created a fake email. And zoomed in on a random house in Utah. A lot of the surveys offer magazines and free samples and such at the end. So. Some guy sitting in Utah somewhere has piles and piles of health magazines and baby wipe samples on his doorstep. With probably more coming every day. All addressed to a beautiful human being by the name of Flug Blug. Plot twist. They are new parents and actually appreciate the baby wipes. My brother worked at an arcade called Hollywood Connections. Around Christmas time they had a Christmas party for the employees and their families. For the party they had buckets of tokens you could use to play any of the games but you had to return the leftovers at the end of the night. I filled both of my cargo short pockets full of coins and snuck out to stash them in my mom's car. A couple months later my third grade class went on a field trip to the same arcade and I sold the tokens 4 for 1 dollar instead of the usual price of 3 for 1 dollar. I made 85 dollars that day. What's unethical is charging 1 dollar for 3 tokens. Some guy at work undid the quick release on my bicycle's wheels and I didn't realize they were loose until I went down a curb and the front wheel rattled. Nearly came off. The next day I confronted my colleagues about it but nobody fessed. Later that day the saddle went missing but I found it on a shelf near the tools. That night, I used epoxy resin to affix box cutter blades to the underside of all the quick releases on the bike. All of them. The next day one of the guys at work cut his hand up real bad and got sacked for dicking around with my property. I used to play a game called Ultima Online when it was one of the most popular MMOs. Well, during this time a few weeks after player housing was patched, I discovered an interesting trick. When reading the deed to a house, it didn't really matter where your character was on the screen as long as you could click the house sign to open the menu. So at least once a week I'd place the cheapest home you could buy out in front of a castle. If then proceed to advertise the sale of a fully furnished castle for a very nice price, I'd find a buyer, and we'd travel to the castle's steps to make the sale. I'd click not on the castle's sign, but my crappy 20,000 gold hut and proceed to sell the castle for a couple million gold and teleport away before the poor dope knew what happened. I earned so much gold during the next few weeks that I could buy anything I wanted and the game just got boring and I quit. I can still imagine the rage those players must have felt when they realize they've lost not only months worth of farming gold, but in most cases months worth of farming their entire guild's gold that they worked hard for to buy a castle. My 14 year old self never felt such a rush when those trades would complete. We found the guy who ripped us off. Bake him away. Toys. Once when I was 5 or 6, I went to the toy section of a TJ Maxx, opened up a small toy cash register, and stole the plastic coins that came with it. You freaking monster. Many years back management called us all at a head office to tell us they were closing our office and were making us all redundant but expected us to work out notice or we'd be fired with no reference. The other offices weren't being touched. All my colleagues were having a shouting match with the MD so I snuck out to the fire escape and went down to the sales floor. Found an unlocked PC and burned two copies of the firm's entire sales database a few minutes apart. Exactly as I suspected. Some sneery little prick from a safe office who'd been tasked with keeping an eye on us came up to me a few days later and said we know that two copies of the sales database were made and we know you got one of them because you have the know-how. And we'll find who took the other one. And he said if I didn't hand it over I'd be fired on the spot. So I opened my briefcase and gave him the CD with it on and no more was said. They never found who burned the other copy and I sold it a couple of months later to another colleague who started her own company with it after I was offered a job in a different industry. It has been so long that I've heard of someone burning a CD that I literally pictured you sneaking downstairs and setting a couple of boxes on fire just to spite them. Nothing crazy. Classmates in high school kept taking my Mountain Dew and drinking it when I wasn't looking. When I finally figured it out, I chugged half the bottle and threw some laxative in there. 
Then I went to use the restroom so the bottle was exposed. When I was in grade 5 a mean grade 6 sir called Alex kept stealing the sandwiches out of my lunchbox and eating them. One day I sprinkled actual sand into my sandwich before he got to it. That was the last time it happened. When I was 17 I found out that one of my foster brothers would wait till I was sleeping and then kiss me and stare at me while I was unaware. After I found out I pretended to be asleep waited until he got close and then decked him in the face. He has down syndrome. When I find out he was doing it I was disgusted and angry and didn't care what his mental capacity was. I just wanted to make sure that he never did that crap again. I mean, in some capacity he knew it was wrong, given he waited until you were sleeping. And honestly, while bad it was the most expedient response and honestly I dk what you were supposed to do. So my mum had some shithead friends and their kids were just as bad. They convinced me to steal from a corner shop. They went in and asked about a fake brand of dog food and the clerk left the till and helped them look for it. I grabbed an entire box of Pokemon card packs and walked out. Like 5100 packs or something. I got a shiny Cherizard. Also grabbed a bag of Skittles. Jesus. Depending on the area, if you were an adult that could be enough to qualify for a felony. Over Pokemon cards. Legend. My little sister put soap on my toothbrush so that night I put a little dab of toothpaste in her long curly hair. By the morning it was all over her pillow and had completely matted her hair. I kept doing it every night for a month until she broke down crying because she thought she was terrible at brushing her teeth. I've never told her it was me and I never will. Oh that's not so bar. Comma I kept doing it every night for a month. Pause. I went to Myers earlier this year to do my grocery shopping and while I was at it, I decided to splurge and grabbed a copy of Monster Hunter World. At some point during the shopping trip I pulled the hoodie I was wearing off, put it on top of the game, which had been sitting on the child seat, and continued on with my shopping. When I get to the car, unload my groceries and when I grabbed my hoodie, I realized I completely forgot to ring up the game. Now a responsible person would go back in the store and ring up the game but frick dude. I just saved $60. So yeah I wound up sharplifting a video game. Meyer is a supermarket based in Michigan not a game store. The case the new games were stored in had been left open and I didn't see any store employees in the area. This was also the first area of the store I stopped at. I think there was a story on reddit about some guy who did the right thing by trying to return it and got arrested. So, you may have dodged a bullet by being unethical. When I was a sophomore in high school I was walking to the school one morning when I witnessed a man slip and fall off his trailer onto his back. I chose to pretend not to see him and continued my way to the school. I was in athletics and had morning detention. If I missed I felt, at the time, that it would cost me dearly and I didn't want that happening. Not your fault either that school admins have such a hard on for punishing kids when they do the right thing. Had an old high school buddy who was working under me. We became friends but his performance was really terrible. I ended up firing him, but he was understanding and we decided to still remain friends. To make it up to him, I decided to be his wingman for this girl he had been talking about for a while. It sounded like it wasn't going well and I was going to help him lock it down. She and I have been married 6 years now. First you take his job away, then you take his girl away. A guy at work messed with my machine too. Make me look bad. His machine used hot glue to stick labels on plastic bottles. Midway through the shift I dumped a thinning solution into the glue tank. The glue thinned out, made a huge mess, and had to be drained out and replaced. It took hours to clean and heat up new glue. Guy never figured out what happened. Guy never figured out what happened. I don't get how people are satisfied by that. To properly get revenge or punishment, the bad guy needs to know the link between his bad behavior and the consequence. The idea that, if you hadn't done wrong, you wouldn't be suffering now. Otherwise, he just thinks the world is out to get him and turns even meaner, and this helps nobody. When I was in high school I ended up living with my dad and his roommate which was also a good friend of his. After a while my dad's roommate started not like the idea of me living there and was in butthole. When I finally learned my dad and I were moving, I poured my probably 2 month old bong water underneath his roommate's mattress. I feel kinda like crap about it now but frick it, dude was a dong lol.
Please tell me you change your bong water more often these days lol. That's the real crime here. I used to work at a vet. My co-worker was a royal bee and wouldn't feed the animals enough food. Let's clean up, is what she said. And she wouldn't give them a bed. So they were essentially sleeping on steel or concrete with a mountain of blankets going unused. I'd had enough. She would hide the vet cleaning supplies. And hid her coffee pot along with it. Like any of us were using it. We had the office pot. So one day I was alone in the building and decided to hunt everything down. I found her coffee pot. And left it. But first I hocked a big logy in the water reservoir. I did this for months. It was so dang justifying seeing her drinking her coffee. And yes. I confronted her on the other issues. But she maintained how in the right she was. I'd just go after she left and properly feed and care for the animals. Should have put some dissolving laxatives in the reservoir. One time at the grocery store self checkout I put in the product code for bananas. Which were $59 per pound. But actually bought apples priced at $99 per pound. I'm calling the police. I worked for a company that offered tuition reimbursement. You would have to fill out a form at the start of the semester and then at the end. Submit a form requesting payment along with receipts for books. Tuition. As well as grades all on school letterhead. I submitted the paperwork the first time and they rejected it saying it wasn't on proper letterhead or symbols. So I created my own letterhead, painstakingly recreated it and making it look extremely good, they accepted that. I created a fake bookstore receipt, tuition receipt, and grade report. I used this every semester for years even if I didn't pass my classes or actually take the classes. They had it capped so it basically covered 4 classes per year, or half time. My fakes were so good that other people at work asked for them so they could use them after their real docs were rejected. Mine always worked. The whole job hunting process is pretty unethical, from both sides. I'll be exaggerating, on the verge of flat out lying, about my skills and enthusiasm to work there, and I expect them to lie about the atmosphere, the overtime, the advancement opportunities etc. I find this is the worst with recruiters. They will lie about aspects of the job. For example, when you show up on your first day and expect to work from home MWF only to find out that's not a thing. The recruiter is just banking on you not quitting the job over it so they still get paid. It annoys the freaking crap out of me. In 6th grade my 3 friends and I were the cool girls. Haven't been seal since. This one girl wanted to be friends with us so bad but we didn't really like her. She wouldn't leave us alone so I decided to tell her she could be our friend but she'd have to change a little bit. I proceeded to make a two page list of all the things she would have to change about herself if she wanted to be our friend like get contacts, cut her hair, or start wearing etnies. So cool at the time. She ended up showing her mom the list and we all got in trouble. She didn't come to school for a while. Never talked to her again. A couple of years later she and I ended up at the same soccer clinic. I had developed cystic acne and she got super hot so I guess she won out in the end. How the turntables. Not me but a friend of mine. Her job can't keep change but a lot of customers would run off before she could let them know and give their change back. Because of that, she pockets any change left by customers. This happened when I was around 12 or so. I was walking down the street and coming the other way was a blind guy with a cane and he was taking up most of the sidewalk so I tried to do a bit of a jog jump around him but that thing happened when something goes between your feet and you end up kicking it, so the dude's cane goes freaking flying and okay I can still redeem myself here right? Well I didn't, I just freaking ran for some reason. I mean I guess my logic is he couldn't see me anyway. Worst of all I'm sure it looked to bystanders like I just kicked this dude cane away like a scumbag. Comma it looked to bystanders like I just kicked this dude cane away like a scumbag. That's literally what you did lol. When I was about 10, a cereal brand, can't recall which one was providing invisible ink pens in each box of their cereal. My mum never bought cereal for us so these cool invisible ink pens seemed like an impossible item to get. Until one day when I was walking past an open classroom during recess, and noticed one of these pens on the closest desk. 
I looked both ways, then quickly ran in and stole said pen, and stuffed it in my backpack. The perfect crime I thought, until an emergency meeting was called by the principal. Apparently one of the second grader's special pens had been stolen, and the 8 year old, heavily autistic girl was completely beside herself with its disappearance. The principal would be conducting bag searches of every student in the school, was only about 200 students in the place, after lunch, but until then, the pen could be put in her mailbox with no questions asked, I of course smelled a rat, and went and hid the pen in the boys toilets, bag was searched and obviously nothing found, and the culprit seemed to have got away with it, except the culprit felt so horrible about what he had done, that he stayed up all night long crying to his mum about what a horrible person he was and confessing to everything, after grounding me for a week, she told me to go and during recess the next day and place the pen back, which I did. She never mentioned it again, and I didn't mention it to anyone either. Also remains the one and only time I've stolen something intentionally, just in case the item belongs to an autistic 8 year old girl. When I was about 14, my school friend and I were sat on a sofa in the lobby of a fancy country club, waiting for the other people in our group to finish going to the toilet. When we got up to leave, turns out my friend perioded all over this fancy, cream colored, expensive looking sofa, to the extent that it looked like someone was murdered on it. She went to the toilet to clean herself up, I picked up as many cushions as I could and covered up the mess, then we noped the frick out of there without telling anyone what had happened. There were a lot of children around that day, I really hope none of them tried to sit on that sofa and got traumatized. Period and I'm dead. Steal to fund my addiction. Been sober now almost 7 years and haven't looked back. I still feel crappy for sinking so low. Good for you getting sober, though. So I was managing a cafe in an office building that also had a doctor's office. We had this one doctor that would like to remind me every day that she came in that she was a vegetarian and kept kosher. Clearly this was not a kosher kitchen. She was always busy, and had the habit of jumping the line to ask questions, delaying other people because of her perceived importance, so she wasn't one of my favorite people to deal with, couldn't use the same knife to cut her sandwich as someone's that touched meat etc. So one day while I was making sandwiches for a line of guests she stopped me to ask if the corn chowder was okay for her to eat. Without thinking about it I said yes and moved on. A couple of hours later it dawned on me that I had rendered some bacon while sautéing the onions for the chowder. Clearly not vegetarian and definitely not kosher. The next day she came in to tell me how much she loved the chowder. I felt bad but not enough to tell her because she was a huge pain in the butt. Maybe better that you didn't tell her after the fact. When I was 13 my parents had a couple stay with us for a week or two. The wife had delusional episodes that involved wandering the house babbling. I was warned if this and told to just ignore it. Well she did it a lot, and it always seemed to involve my room, late at night, and yelling. P off me was in the shower one day, fuming about another intrusion, and sitting there in the shower stall was Wiffy's special dandruff shampoo. So I peed in it, shook it up lots and put it back. I'm not proud of my actions, but damn it why didn't they get a hotel room? You were pee off, so you pee in. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.